Gasoline had filled the air, making concerned neighbors leave their homes to investigate. Everyone was watching him, but he shrugged things off and kept it with his task. The wind started to pick up and gray clouds were now forming about the town. The tube now rose into the air and looked like a worm. It caused the neighbors to laugh out loud, but Randy never stopped. He kept pumping without stopping, hoping that he had enough time left. In fact, he ignored them all, knowing that they might regret their choice to a point and laugh instead of doing the same. Randy Wagner had a take on life like no other. His dad had always told him that life wasn't easy. After working for most of it, he had a few things, like a nice house in Rose Sharon, Texas. However, something soon happened that might threaten his family. In May of 2016, Texas was plagued by severe storms. The rain came down for an entire week without stopping. Soon the water levels rose and Randy checked the news all the time. He hoped the storm didn't flood him out. Burnham County had now been submerged in about 19 inches of rain. In fact, the road had flooded and people had been missing. It was a scary situation and Randy worried about what might happen. Randy lived just 100 miles away from the area that was getting hit hard. He was concerned, but he was shocked by his neighbors. In Brazoria County, where he lived, no one else was taking the situation seriously. Randy, though, was different. No one took the flood warning seriously and wasn't bothered by them. Randy heard many people saying that the storms couldn't be that bad. They were setting up cameras to show the storm on social media. Instead, he was stockpiling for the event. About a month after the initial flood warning began, a mandatory evacuation was then ordered for Brazoria County. Now, people started to get the idea that things were pretty bad and started to panic. What about Randy? Most of the neighbors weren't prepared for the event. They had spent so much time setting things up and not believing how bad it could get. However, Randy had been stockpiling and had the necessities to outlast the horror. Randy was in about a standby and let the floods destroy everything and didn't want to abandon his things. How could he stand up to nature? He scoured the internet for anything. There had to be something he could do, and then he got a possible answer. Finally, Randy found an unconventional solution to his problem online. However, he couldn't wait for delivery, and most of the companies had shut down. Plus, he needed the necessary time to set things up. What could he do? Meteorologists had predicted that the storm could hit any day and there was no time to lose. His wife and children prepared to evacuate, but Randy jumped into his vehicle and left them, racing to Louisiana and praying hard. Randy didn't know how long he might have had, but he had to get to Louisiana and back home before the rain. He decided it might take eight and a half hours to get there. As he left, his wife called him crazy, but he felt that this plan should work. As Randy drove along the roads, he saw tons of storm damage around him. What if he got to one that had been closed on his journey? This worried him, but he was even more fearful that roads might be closed on the way home to Texas, dooming him and his family. If he had not left himself enough time to get back home, his family could be in severe danger. His failed plan could cost them lives. In fact, if the storm hit right then, his family couldn't leave because he had the only car. As he raced home, he prayed he still had time. It was a dangerous 260-mile trip, but he made it. At the destination, he handed over $8,300 and then loaded his 800-pound item on the truck. He pulled it into the driveway, seeing his neighbors rushing, but Randy was calm. Randy started to position tubes around the perimeter of his home and fired up the two gasoline generators. The spectacle in the yard began to attract people while they loaded up their cars. Some of them worried about the fuel smells. Over ripe and huge clouds had started to come from the south now. Still, his neighbors couldn't pass up the chance to mock him and made the time they needed. In fact, they gathered to point and laugh at Randy while he tried to outwit Mother Nature. The neighbors should have been evacuating but were cheering while they watched Randy fill the black tubes around his property. Most people called him crazy, but he continued adding water from a ditch. Then they started rising. What was his plan? Randy's wife wanted to see what was happening and seemed horrified at what her husband was doing. Why was he being pig-headed? She noticed a huge tube, but it seemed like a water wing or some kind of toy. Instead of helping, she started to yell at her husband. He should have been preparing to evacuate and assist her with packing and the kids. What he was doing instead of being here for her. She had no idea what was coming next. The president had declared a disaster for the state, so military airboats and vehicles were there to evacuate the locals. Luckily, the water hadn't reached Randy's neighborhood yet as he tried to get his strange device to work. However, it was just a matter of time. 
Randy had been searching for any way to stop the water from hurting his beautiful home. He had seen people erect barriers before. Finally, he found a contraption online that was called an aqua dam and believed it might work. This contraption was huge, watertight tube that was 450 feet long and 30 inches tall. Though some neighbors had tried to make dams with sandbags for their properties, Randy was hoping to erect one complete barrier around his home. Randy spent half a day erecting the aqua dam. Everyone else was gone by then. A day later, the water arrived and started rising. Randy watched it surround other homes and bump up against the dam. If the water went over 30 inches, he was in trouble. Pictures and reports started pouring in about the devastation in the town. The news channels had nothing else to show. They depicted waterlogging businesses and homes that were now not standing or soaked through and through. As footage from one news helicopter circulated, it was clear that one house stood dry among the wreckage. Randy had a green island in the middle of a 27-inch brown sea. However, he wasn't the only one. Someone else was in the same situation, but without the luxury of this inflatable barrier. In Little Rock, Arkansas, another man was watching the reports with dread. James Hill knew his area wasn't about to be spared because there were heavy rains and flash floods all around. He saw his family's pale faces as they wondered what to do. James couldn't stand it any longer. The reports were now showing at least 10 inches of rain. And that didn't account for the water already on the ground. However, he wasn't just worried about his family's fate. What else was there? While James was worried about his family and their safety, he was also fearful of losing his 10,000 acres of crops. They were right on the front line of the incoming flood. His entire livelihood of bringing in food was about to be washed away. More than anything, though, James wanted his wife and two sons to be safe. What about his solution? Did he just pack up their belongings and scatter like everyone else? He felt a deep stab of pain as he looked at the heirlooms and family photos. Just a few minutes later, James saw a gray and red glint of metal beside the barn. A light bulb of an idea sparked in his head. What could he have been thinking of? And what was the metal piece that gave him that thought? There might be something else the family could do instead of abandoning it all. He tossed the keys to his older son and said, let's go. Everyone stared at him in confusion. The wife asked through her tears if they were leaving. He said they weren't leaving, but he had to go to the gas station and fill up his cans with diesel fuel. His wife said that their car didn't take diesel, but James said that the solution to their problem was in the barn. There was a final stand they should take. James had sent his son alone to the gas station with every jerry can they had. It was a now or never situation, and his son hopped into the car and headed out. However, James stayed behind to get started on this little plan. Dumping the last bit of diesel he had into the tank, he held his breath and tried to start it. The motor spat, but sputtered to life, and a smile of hope showed on James's face. He hadn't used his excavator in six months. However, he had no idea he might lose his friend because of it. The family had already suffered a devastating flood years ago. He was determined that it wasn't happening again. He and the two boys used a digger to build a levee around their home. However, it was a race against time. His wife was busy in the house, moving their possessions upstairs. James had come in to get a granola bar to help with his hunger and saw that she'd been crying. Wondering what was wrong, he asked her to explain and things were sure to be okay. It was actually worse than he expected. She wasn't upset about the turmoil. Some of the neighbors had noticed what was happening. They called her to beg James to do the same thing for their homes. This was a big problem, but why? The clouds were now rolling in and the darkening sky made it feel like evening time. James was already praying that the flood held off long enough to finish their barrier. There wasn't time to help others, but the neighbors didn't care. As the first drops fell, he held his breath and pushed the machine harder because they weren't done. James had to ignore the stream of water that kept running down his face. The rains had come and they weren't letting up. In fact, the excavator was now scraping mud to create their makeshift levee. It was a miracle that the family finished in time. However, they had lost the crops and only managed to protect their home. In fact, the neighbors had to evacuate and leave. But his family was now safe, which is ultimately the most important thing.